Transformers are a new class of model that's taking the world of natural language processing by storm, but they're really big. Today we're going to talk about some methods for reducing the size of trained transformer models, their benefits and drawbacks on NLP for developers. In the world of NLP, transformer models are the next big thing. Both figuratively, they're achieving state-of-the-art results in a wide variety of tasks, and literally, the recently released T5 model has 11 billion trainable parameters. Fortunately, there are lots of ways to make transformer models smaller without significantly reducing model performance. Specifically, I'm going to talk about quantization, distillation, pruning, and more specialized models. One very common method for reducing model size is quantization. So quantization reduces the number of bits it takes to store different trained model parameters. It's very common to quantize the weights of models in particular. When quantization is done well, it can dramatically reduce the size of your model without really affecting performance. One very common transformation is to go from a 32-bit floating point precision down to an 8-bit integer precision. And the biggest problem with quantization is usually that it's hardware dependent. Pruning is removing trained weights from the model. For transformers, usually you'll pick some sort of measure of importance and then a threshold and any heads that do not meet or exceed the threshold for whatever the measure is that you've picked, you will remove from the trained model. Uh, and some research has shown that up to 80% of the heads of a trained transformer can be removed without dramatically changing performance. So this can be a great space saving alternative. Another approach is distillation. So distillation is a little bit different from the other things that we've discussed in that it's not a transformation of an existing model, it's training a new smaller model. In addition to predicting the same thing that the larger model is predicting, your student model will also be rewarded for having a similar distribution of weights as the larger model. Distillation can be a little bit finicky and takes a little bit more setup because you're training a new model. But when done well, you can have a model that's many times smaller and also trains much more quickly than the larger original model. Another approach is to train a smaller, more specialized model for the specific task that you're working on. So many of the really large transformer models like BERT or GPT-2 or T5 are trained to do anything. So they're what we call open domain. They're trained to handle any topic. In general, models that have a narrower domain that they're designed to handle can be smaller with equivalent performance. So an example of that is Convert, which instead of predicting all of the English language, uh, specifically predicts which turns are likely to occur. So why don't these transformations to make the models smaller hurt performance? There's been a trend in natural language processing and computer vision and deep learning research in general that's found that larger models trained with more data tend to do better. How can you create a smaller model that does pretty much the same? This is an active area of research, but some things that seem to be emerging from work particularly on BERT is that really large transformers might be bigger than they need to be. So they might have more parameters than they need to do specific tasks. So we might call these over-parameterized. Uh, so you have Goldberg has a paper where he discusses a number of tasks that had better performance with the smaller version of BERT than the larger version of BERT. In addition, there's research showing that there's a lot of redundancy in models like BERT, where the attention heads are encoding basically the same thing, so you can remove some of them with no detrimental effect to the overall model. What are the benefits of smaller models? Well, a big one is that they're cheaper to store, <laughs> since compute is money, uh, and also tend to make a little bit faster predictions. The full BERT model can be a little bit slow to run, so a smaller version runs a little bit faster, will probably be better for most applications. They're also better for embedded systems or devices with limited storage. Storage. And when done well, most of these approaches result in little to no drop in model performance. What are the drawbacks? One big one is that these methods all require starting with a large model that you then reduce down using the techniques that we've mentioned. Uh, so far, we haven't been able to train a small model that has the same sort of state-of-the-art result. In addition, most of these methods require some specialized skills. Uh, for example, for pruning to figure out what a good method of detecting importance is and a good threshold to use to decide which heads to keep. Some more resources if you're interested. Uh, I'd really recommend this paper, A Primer in Bertology, what we know about BERT and how it works. Uh, we actually read the paper on the channel, so I'll link the videos in the, uh, the next slide. In addition, Vincent on the Raza team has a series of videos on attention and attention mechanisms, and the fourth one goes into much more depth on transformer models and how they work. So if you're interested in more details on this class of models, it's a good video to check out.
Thanks so much for joining today. I hope you found this helpful and start using smaller models in your own work. I've included some videos that you might find interesting that are relevant. Uh, and also, if you're looking for links to some of the other resources that I've mentioned, they are in the description on YouTube. Have a great day.